All right, so I got my awesome PS5 here with a whopping 825 gigabytes of internal storage, of which I can only use about 660 gigabytes to install games. Now, at least they're not like Microsoft and charging an arm and leg for expansion. And in fact, I got a drive in the mail from MoveSpeed. They sent this to me. This MoveSpeed's a company that makes a lot of chargers, and they make really good chargers. They said, hey, we got a new drive. We'd like you to test it out, make a video about it. That's what we're going to do, and this drive is going to work out perfect for my PS5. Going to increase the storage, and this thing's supposed to be pretty darn fast. So that's what we're going to check out in this video. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be upgrading the storage in my PS5. And like I said, MoveSpeed sent me this NVMe drive. We'll get into the specs in just a second but they were nice enough to send this to me. And adding a drive to my PS5 has been on my to-do list, so this is just the perfect opportunity to both increase my storage and test out their awesome drive. Now, in the package that they sent me along with this is a heat sink, some adhesive, some more screws, and a little screwdriver. So that's pretty nice. So let's talk about the specs on this NVMe drive. All right, so as far as the specs go for this guy here, it is a M.2 NVMe drive, which is what you need for a PlayStation 5 to upgrade the storage. It is PCIe 4 Gen 4, so that is uh, super fast. And again, this needs to be Gen 4 for the PS5 so that it can operate at the speed and play those PS5 games at the full speed that it's supposed to. So that's gonna be completely compatible. All of their documentation on their website says that they're compatible with PS5. Uh, it's got the heat sink for it, so it's going to be good to go. Now, this also has a five-year warranty, according to their uh, what they sent me. On the box itself, it does show like three-year warranty stamped on there, but the information on the website and the information that they sent me said five-year. They said anything that goes wrong with it, just let them know, and they will replace it. So that's always good to know. So now that we know all the specs about the drive, let's go ahead and pull it out and get it ready to go into the drive. We've got to put the heat sink on it, and then we're going to pop open that PS5, and I'll show you how to install it. Hey everybody, it's Future Chris here, and I actually already recorded this part of the video, but the uh, recording messed up. So I'm going to do this part again, but unfortunately I've already affixed the heat sink to the drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through exactly how I did that. I won't be able to demonstrate it the second time but I will talk you through it. So basically, once we opened up this uh, drive here, took the NVMe drive out, which looks like this on one side, and it had the pretty sticker on the other side here. And this sticker uh, sits where this heat sink now is, and it basically acts as a heat sink if you don't have an external heat sink or if you don't have an add-on heat sink. So you have to peel this thing off very slowly, and it is pretty sticky. So you're going to peel this off of the drive, pretend that this is the, the drive that is now already done. And you peel this all the way off, you can get rid of that. And then in the package, I had a thermal pad that was inside, you know, obviously these two sticky things. So you peel off one side of the adhesive that goes onto the thermal pad. You're going to place that on the drive itself. So now that you took the sticker off, now that you took this sticker off, the drive had some chips exposed to it. So that's all the memory controllers and the memory chips. And that's what you're going to put the thermal pad on. Then once you put that thermal pad on, then you can just put this drive on. Now this drive goes on nice and square. It actually has little lips to allow it to, to line up right. And you want to line up this notch here, which is where the screw is going to go. Make sure that this notch is not blocking the notch of the actual drive so the notch of the heat sink should not go further that way now once you get that done you also want to look if you line that up right then the edge of the pcb board right here should line up with the edge of the heat sink as well that's going to make sure that it seats in properly so this is uh already completed sorry you didn't get to see me do it but it's really pretty easy so once you get that done in that back package also was some more uh, M.2 screws, so that's nice. We had two that came, or three that came with the heat sink, 
and uh, two that came inside the package. So plenty of those. You won't need that for this installation, but if you use this drive in a laptop or in a uh, desktop on a motherboard, then these always come in handy because sometimes the motherboard doesn't have them. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and grab our PS5. We're going to open that up and I'll show you how to install this. All right, we are ready to install this drive into the PS5. So I've gone ahead and shut it completely down. Don't go into rest mode. Make sure you go into the power settings and do a full shutdown. Once you do that, you remove all the cables from the back. And if you've got the vertical stand, this guy here, then go ahead and unscrew that from the bottom because we won't be able to take the case off with that vertical stand still on there. So next step is opening this up and getting the new drive in. And honestly, this PS5 is the easiest of all the PlayStations to add a drive to. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our right hand over on this side, left hand on this side. If you look, I've got the back ports facing me and the power port on the left side. So the, the front is back here. So one uh, hand on this side, one hand on this side. I'm going to lift with my right hand and then I'm going to kind of pull to the left with my left thumb. So just a simple little lift and then pull and it comes right up. So when we get it back on, it's going to be obviously the same thing. We're just going to lay it down and push it back on. So once we take this plastic shroud off, then you can see uh, some of the, the guts inside here. And this is the drive bay where we're going to put this new drive. So let me spin this guy around. At this point, we're going to need a number one Phillips screwdriver. The screwdriver that comes with the drive kit is obviously not a number one. It's, it's much too small. This is perfect for the screws that it came with if you're going to be installing those on a, uh, a PC. But Sony made it nice and easy where we're going to use a number one screwdriver. And I've got the number one bit here put into my Strabido driver, which comes in this kit. And this is my favorite kit. I use it for all my upgrades. I'm not sponsored by them. I bought that with my own money, but I love it to death. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. So number one bit, you do that to make sure that you don't strip any screws out because these next two screws we're going to be using are exactly that right size. So we're going to unscrew this guy here. And once we get that all the way unscrewed, the magnetic tip for my awesome little screwdriver here is going to pull it straight up. You don't want to accidentally drop that screw into this fan that would not be good once you get that one screw out this drive cover is just going to kind of lift right up and then you pull it out a little slot here and then you're going to see another screw here this is where the drive is going to mount and it's got several different mounting holes depending on the length of the, the drive you most likely will have a 80 millimeter length um, nvme drive which is the most common which is going to mount in this hole right here so we need to move this screw and the standoff over to this hole. So let's go ahead and loosen this screw up and take it out. And be careful once you do this, again, don't drop the screw, but be careful because this standoff, there's nothing holding that in place. So it's just gonna kind of bounce around. So I just take my drive here, I'm just gonna shimmy it right on over. And you got these three little studs on each of these holes and the studs just kind of hold that standoff in place. So once that's in place, we're ready to put the drive in, and then we're going to secure the drive and the standoff down with this screw again. So the drive, if you've ever installed an NVMe drive, it's exactly the same way. We've got a little offset notch, which is going to be matching an offset notch here. Now the only difference is with a laptop or a PC, the connector is usually right out in front of you where you can see it. This one is kind of hidden in the shroud here. Now I'm going to turn this around just a tiny bit so you can see that standoff. So you can see right here, I've got some pins to the right. I've got a bunch of pins to the left and then a little blank space right there. That's going to match right up with the blank space on this hard drive. So the only tricky part is you're not going to put this thing down to where the contacts are touching the green. It's actually going to go up a little bit. So once you get it close to where that connector is, if it feels like you're just pushing straight into the connector and not going into a groove, then just kind of lift it up a little bit, and then you'll find that there's a groove, and you're just going to push it straight in. 
Now there'll be a tiny little click when you push it in, just letting you know that you seated it all the way in there. And the way that you'll know if it's actually seated in there perfectly is once you push it down, the little semicircle screw hole on the uh, drive is going to match right up with that standoff. So that matches up perfectly. So now I'm ready to take that screw again. We're going to load it onto our magnetic screwdriver. Makes our life so much easier. Hold down this drive with one hand and send the screw down with the other. And you don't have to go super tight on it, just one little quick tighten and that's it. She's done. So let's go ahead and take this guy and we're going to just put the tab right into the little groove here. Lay that down. Take our screw, put it in there, and go ahead and tighten this up. And now that's all done. So I'm going to rotate this around again, just so that the orientation matches how it was when we took the lid off. So we know which way we're going to expect to push it. So now I'm simply just going to take the lid and just kind of lay it down on here and it'll kind of find its way to where it'll move a little bit left to right but it won't move at all front to back that's when you know that all the tabs are in the right spot so once you got all the tabs in the right spot then you should just be able to hold the right side and then push with your left side one big snap and it's done so now we're ready to go ahead and stand this thing back up plug some cables into it and boot it up and see our new hard drive in the operating system. All right, so we booted the uh, PlayStation back up and the part that you missed, again, because I had a little hiccup with my recording, uh, the part that you missed is when you first boot it up, it's gonna come up with kind of a black screen. It's gonna say, hey, we found a new NVMe drive. Would you like to format it? It gives you two options at the bottom. Uh, the one is, nope, I don't want to. And the other one is, yes, I do. So you're gonna select, yes, I do. It's gonna format the drive and then it's going to test the speed on it and it tests the speed on it to make sure that it is quick enough to run PlayStation 5 games off of it and this one performed just fine so it was perfect for that and then once you get done with that it gives you some instructions if you want to change the location of where you install your new game so we're going to show you that in the settings here so let's go ahead and go over into the settings and we're going to go down to storage and now you can see I've got my so console storage and I've got M.2 SSD storage, that's new. So if I look at that, I've already formatted this. If you need to reformat it, you can do that right here. And I do have one game on there because in my previous recording, I did copy a game over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the game from this drive back into the internal storage. That's gonna test the read speed of the new drive. Then I'm gonna copy it from the internal storage back to the M.2, and that's gonna test the write speed. So let's go ahead and go into this M.2 and look at the games and apps and you can see I've got Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales which is a 40 gigabyte game so let's go ahead and select this say select items to move and then we're going to go ahead and go down and move so it's going to say hey this is going to move this 39.23 gigabyte drive or game into the console storage so I'm going to hit OK and right away it's just going to start moving straight from the M.2 drive that we installed to the internal storage. Now this is showing it's gonna take about three minutes to move that huge file over, so we're gonna go ahead and just let it do its thing, and I'll check back with you in just a second. All right, so we went ahead and copied that file over. It did take about three minutes, so you can see now that I've got nothing in my internal storage. So let's go ahead and move back to our console storage and go into games and apps. We're gonna find that same game Miles Morales, and we're going to select that to move. We're going to tell it to move. And now what this is going to do, it's going to move from the internal storage to the M.2 that we just installed. So this is more so testing the write speed, which is usually going to be the slower of the two, the write speed of the new drive. So let's go ahead and hit OK on that. And now this is saying it's going to take about 30 seconds to move over. And this is what I saw before when I did this the first time, that uh, the, the writing 
to the new drive that we just installed, that move speed drive, is way faster than the write speed of the internal drive. So I'm not sure if that's the way it's supposed to be, but that's definitely how it's uh, working out for us, that this new drive is, seems to be a lot faster than the built-in one that Sony gave us. And 30 seconds later, that thing is done. So the last thing I wanted to show you is where you would install your games or where you change the install location. So down here in install location, we can choose where we want to install our PS5 and PS4 games. Now it's set up default to be console storage, but if you want to change this, we can change this so that when we download something from the store or if we throw a disc in there, it's going to install it to whichever these we select if we want to install it to M.2. So maybe if your console storage is getting pretty full and you want to make sure that your save games and anything that you download update wise is going to make it onto the drive and not get messed up then you would want to start moving some of the games off of your console onto your M.2 and then change your install location so that the new stuff gets installed to your M.2 and since it seems to be the faster of the two makes sense to go ahead and throw it on there so that is going to wrap it up basically Thank you so much to MoveSpeed for sending that drive to me. It came in at the perfect time because I've been wanting to install a new drive into this PS5. Give me some more storage even though I have even started to scratch the surface of filling it up with games. Now I don't have to worry about uh, how many games I can throw on there. Now this was a pretty easy process. The same process would have worked for if you used a 2TB drive or a 4TB drive. In fact, I'll leave links below to the MoveSpeed drives that I used. Because right now, as we're recording, there are some sales and coupons on Amazon for them. And as it turns out, the 2TB drive is only about $20 more than the 1TB. So for that extra 20 bucks, I would say go ahead and grab that 2TB drive. The 4TB is still a little bit more than that. So 2TB seems to be the sweet spot right now. But go ahead and check out that link and uh, save some money with those coupons. But that's going to wrap it up. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. I appreciate that. If you want to see more stuff like this, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And you can check out some of my other videos. But thank you as always for watching. Check out those links below. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comments below. And until next time, peace out and geek out.